guys here once again at Good Tech Academy. I am Adam, and you are those BEA useful little storage devices that have come back here to let me fill as much raw data up here as I can until you can't hold any more. So today we will be discussing the safest ways to work on these monsters right here without you getting injured, me getting injured, or this right here being destroyed and all of us needing to be replaced. But to do that, I'm going to need a little help. Hi, I'm Adam. Um, yeah, I know that, and I'm pretty sure they do too. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, if you're ready, I'm ready, and I know that guy over there is ready, so let's go ahead and get to it. So, before we start, there are some terms you will need to know. First off, and most important, is ESD, electrostatic discharge. Most people have experienced this in their life, if not everybody. It's what happens whenever you walk across the surface and then you reach out to touch someone or something and you get that little shock, that little arc of electricity between your finger and the point of contact that you just made. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I spent an hour once walking around my house and nothing but my socks dragging my feet so that I could shock my sister. Oh yeah, and well, how did that go? Well, her hair was frizzed out for a week and I got grounded for trying to electrocute my sister. To explain what is happening, as you move across the surface, you build up an imbalance of electrons. This is what is known as potential. The imbalance builds into a crescendo. And then once it hits that point, it looks for the fastest way to discharge. Now, computers are excellent conductors of electricity. All those components in there will definitely conduct electricity. So if you reach in there with that potential, there is a possibility that you can do damage to the boards or chips that will be so bad that it can cause system degradation or even complete system failure of that board. Hmm. Who knew that my finger was a low key laser gun? <sighs> yeah, sure. We'll go with that. So, next, EMI or electromagnetic interference. This is not nearly as dangerous as ESD, but it is still very damaging to computers, especially those hard drives. There are lots of things in our day-to-day -day lives that give off this electromagnetic interference, including our cell phones, laptop bricks, and speakers. And yes, laptops and computers do have things like speakers attached with them, but they are particularly shielded against those devices. They are, however, not shielded against those 18 to 20 inch subwoofers in a home theater system laying down that thick, thick, heavy bass track. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Uh, lastly, there is also something called RFI, radio frequency interference. Have you ever heard strange noises coming through your speakers whenever you're running your PC or maybe even your car? Sometimes these noises can be even as minor as just some light whining or static or even faint voices or music. And no, it's nothing ethereal. This is RFI. In tech speech, things give off radio waves. And those radio waves might interfere with each other. Such as if there are many devices in an area that are using radio frequency, those radio frequencies will overlap and begin to mesh together. Everything from our AM FM radios all the way down to Wi-Fi adapters and yes, once again, cell phones give off these radio waves. And Technology is not perfect when it comes to receiving these radio waves, so there can be jumbled and even interference, especially with devices that are unshielded or not quite calibrated right. So I have thrown down a lot of information, but I'm not done yet. So let us get to a computer and start actually cracking it open and see safety in action. So of course we need a PC to work on. This thing right here is perfectly fine, but you brought one? All right. So let's see it. Yeah, here's my gaming PC. It needs a little work, maybe. Ah! Okay, so first, you wanna make sure before you even crack that case open that you have all the tools necessary to work on that PC. Now most PCs can be worked on with nothing more than an anti-static strap, and a screwdriver. 
However, there are some tools out there that you may need, such as torque wrenches, nut drivers, a pair of hemostats, plastic tweezers, little grabber tools to pick up anything you may drop. It is recommended by A Plus and CompTIA to have what they call a tech repair kit, which is a repair kit that has all of these tools in it that you may need to ever work on a PC or even a small device. You can go online and find many of these tech cases going online on sale anywhere between $20 to even $80. Honestly, it is really hard to say any one toolkit is better than the other because every tech needs special tools to do their job. Whereas for me today, like I said, all I need is a screwdriver and an anti-static strap to work on this PC. You, how on the other hand, may need a small toolkit repair kit or even one of the big full-on repair kits with every size socket standard and metric. Now anytime you work on tech, first thing you want to do is remove any source of power, turn it off and wait for everything to shut down. Once that is done, unplug and remove the battery so there is no available power that the PC can feed on. Once that is done, you will want to then hold the power button. What this does is it discharges all electricity and capacitors, bleeding it off so that you eliminate even more risk of a short. Once that is done, this is where this little tool comes into play. Uh, you will put this on your wrist and then clamp the other side to the PC. You want to clamp this someplace on the frame. This will ground you to the PC so that you have the same potential as the rest of the computer. This will eliminate any chance of ESD and you may need to remove and cover the PC before you clamp the strap on. Now you may need to remove the cover of the PC before you clamp the strap on. There are other devices out there that do the exact same thing as this anti-static strap and that's called anti-static mats. However, if for any reason neither of these are available, you can always do what they call self-grounding, which is placing your hand on the middle of the frame of the computer and then holding on to it while you work onto that. Now this isn't recommended due to the fact that at any point in time you may let go of that side of that PC to use both hands to work on it, and that when that happens, you then no longer have the same potential as that PC. As a tech tip from this guy right here, Always try to have yourself an anti-static strap or an anti-static mat to use and try not to use self-grounding unless there is absolutely no other choice. Also, be mindful of the screws and bolts when loosening and tightening whenever you are removing or installing components. If you over torque or use the incorrect tools, you can do damage to those components or even to the screws and the case. So, there it was. Hopefully you learned something. I know this guy did. Well, as always, please leave a comment and like the video, please. And if you have not yet, please subscribe, hit that bell, and until next time, y'all stay amazing out there. And we will see you in the next video. I mean, we, well, we maybe, I don't know. We will see. All right, until next time, everybody. See you later.